We often cover the as yet unexplained features that can be found within the construction of many of the ancient ruins all over the world. These seemingly impossible feats of ancient architecture, seen by all, yet perceived by an academia that would like you to believe they were completed a mere few thousand years ago. Yet any explanation as to how these tasks were indeed undertaken or completed remain absent. We strongly suspect that a vast portion of Earth's and indeed our own human history is being covered up, simply because those who wish to sell you the answers do not have them. It is far more profitable for those in the so-called know to be perceived as indeed all-knowing, rather than to admit the patent fact they simply cannot explain these ancient structures. They do not know who built them, and most important of all, no idea when they were built. Countless museum artifacts also that, according to these same individuals, regardless of the obvious precision contained within were created by individuals far less capable than we are today. Often absent or attached to illogical explanations as to their manufacture, these artifacts continue to be attributed to civilizations whose most advanced carving technologies were copper and stone chisels. We feel that many of these ancient artifacts, along with many impossible ancient megaliths, found perfectly placed within ancient ruins all over the world are strong evidential factors to suggest that an ancient civilization once had at their disposal highly advanced precision machinery. One of the many interesting, perplexing ancient features are the ancient star holes, which have been discovered at a number of different ancient sites around the planet. Although places like Puma Punku or Giza's basalt plain possess precision drill holes, diving many feet into incredibly hard stone. These star holes are, as the title suggests, mysteriously created in the shape of stars. So far found within Massachusetts in the USA, and also within Volda in Norway, their existence, we feel, are proof of an ancient drilling technology, far superior to our own today, let alone our recent ancestors. How were these holes created? or indeed why. A number of these particular drill holes can be found within Volda, and a number have also been discovered within the surrounding area of Flint County Quarry, Massachusetts, although interestingly, each slightly different in shape. Are these seemingly impossible drill holes evidence left by a lost civilization? Intriguingly, when the star holes occur, they only cover part of the total length of that particular hole the remainder of the hole still having the typical round cylindrical shape. However, mysteriously, the length of the rifled grooves and their position within the hole varies considerably with each drill hole, sometimes even occurring midway through a rock. Ancient star holes, an as yet unexplained ancient feature, which we find highly compelling. Many people assume that ancient astronaut theories are nothing more than modern pseudoscience, holding no credence within reality. However, this is a mistake. The idea of ancient visitors from other planets in distant galaxies has been around since the beginning of human history. Although the theory has undoubtedly gained tremendous popularity over the past few decades, nearly every ancient tribe and civilization found on Earth, regardless of geographical location, have a story regarding visitors from other planets. Our choice of the most compelling would have to be that of the Dogons in Africa, one of the oldest surviving tribes on Earth. They not only have a legend which tells of alien visitors, but they retained invaluable data, reliable knowledge which was passed down from generation to generation. Details surrounding their ancient visitors' home solar system Details that at the time, modern civilization had yet to discover. Known as the Nomo, the Dogon tell of giant reptilians who had traveled here from a small sister star of Sirius, a star with a 40-year orbit that the Dogon still celebrate every 40 years. What is remarkable about their claims, however, is the details they give regarding the Sirius system and indeed the Nomo's home star. 
a tiny star which our modern telescopes did not confirm the existence of until several years after the first cataloguing of this information. Another strange reaction to these remarkable experiences within these ancient cultures is a wanting to replicate the appearance of these entities. These interplanetary visitors often brought gifts in the form of knowledge. Due to these revelations, many of our ancestors have perceived these beings as godlike. The teaching of agriculture, the gift of hops, cannabis, the Dogon state that hemp was a gift from the Nomo. Indeed, the dog star is the source of the planet's name. Even strawberries, among many other living things, and ingenious techniques of managing such, have been said throughout antiquity, indeed throughout the world's cultures, to have first arrived here on Earth in the form of gifts from these beings. The dogu, dogu meaning clay figure, could be seen as commemorative creations in memory of such entities visiting our planet in the past. Made during the late Jomon period, over 10,000 years ago, made with such tremendous skill and artistic accuracy, you have to wonder if these were not created with the purpose of remembering a detailed image of our guests' appearances, then what else were they created for? Or more specifically, to look like? Interestingly, some of the figures appear to have been deliberately created missing limbs, resting on intricately made crutches. Was this done with a likeness to real beings, possibly battle-scarred from previous more hostile encounters? The Incas, Mayans, Aztecs, Dogons, indeed anywhere you look within antiquity, you will inevitably be confronted with fantastic tales of ancient visitors. Even detailed knowledge of things so far out, we cannot even confirm if what they say is true. With so many similar legends found all across the world regarding ancient astronauts, it's safe to say the truth is out there. We often find that many of the most intriguing, enigmatic, and as yet unexplained ancient ruins found all over our world are regularly claimed as the legacy of more recent, well-studied, permitted ancestors. However, this constant attribution to lesser-developed ancestors, studied and understood intimately through funded investigation, is self-contradictory in nature. For the parallel study of said ages, and in turn early man's development, disproves their own claim of said individual's culpability, or indeed capabilities. It seems that, although only a specific tale of events is publicly permitted for grants, offering financial security to so-called professors and historians, all willing to toe the proverbial line, inadvertently expose themselves without any outside intervention. Due to the detailed, well-established understandings possessed by modern archaeological study, we are, by default, also made intimately aware of the tools available to each of the claimed culprits, the knowledge levels in which they possessed, and the fact that many other factors regarding our not-so-distant ancestors disproves academia's own testimony when it comes to them as claimed builders. However, although, in our opinion, there is overwhelming evidence to suggest that many ancient ruins were instead re-inhabited by these claimed constructors, utilizing these ancient sites, often fortresses, beneficial, often ingenious, and baffling constructions safely, virtually impenetrable designs, and thus solid foundations for the development of their own civilizations, not only allowed them to flourish, but also leaving behind a detailed array of archaeological finds used as the basis of academia's claim of these groups having built these sites, but also claiming such sites as their work in historical records, records which are always absent any explanation as to how this was achieved. There also exist sites on Earth that, instead of allowing funded individuals to use additional re-inhabitations as a basis for an argument for their origins, can instead Due to the sheer mass of these historical footprints, each stacked atop one another, can instead actually indicate the site's enormous age. A land feature generated as a result of this incredibly long-lived accommodation that we call tells. Tells are artificial mounds formed from the accumulated refuse from generations of people, 
Tells are most commonly associated with the archaeology of the ancient Near East, but they are also found elsewhere, such as Central Asia, Eastern Europe, West Africa, and Greece. Within the Near East, they are concentrated in less arid regions, including Upper Mesopotamia, the Southern Levant, Anatolia and Iran, which had more continuous settlement. What can only be explained as man-made, artificially generated sedimentary layers, one has to ask themselves, how long would a particular site have to have been inhabited for to create such enormous, incredibly deep layers of earthwork, merely generated by its inhabitants living in said area, clearly for an unimaginably long period of time? The herbal citadel, for example, locally called Kalat, is a tell located within the historical city center of Erbil in the Kurdistan region of Iraq. The citadel appeared for the first time in historical sources in the Ibla tablets around 2300 BC, and although it has been confirmed as having been inhabited as far back as the Neolithic period, we have long argued due to their activities and capabilities that the Neolithics were a surviving remnant of the most recent lost civilization. If this is so, then it is highly likely that the citadel of Erbil is in fact far older than that of even the Neoliths, its incredible height also indicative of an inconceivably long history of virtually continuous inhabitation. How old is the Erbil citadel, or indeed the world's tells in general? Is it an earthwork merely started by our Neolithic ancestors? Or is it possibly a relic spanning far before currently understood or indeed accepted timelines for man? They are, undoubtedly, highly compelling.